Well, welcome to Investor Intel at PDAC 2018. I'm lucky enough today to be joined by Byron King. Byron's a very well-known uh, to many of our viewers as a letter writer. Byron, I've got two quotes that I want to ask you about. First of all, I hear you've said the mining industry doesn't make sense. Tell I me more. I said that. It, it, here we are at PDAC, which is the world's largest mining convention surrounded by mining companies that the lights and air being paid for by, by the mining industry, and we're in the midst of, a, of an industry that makes no sense. Couple reasons. Uh, first of all, the mining industry has done a terrible job of telling its story of how necessary it is to the world. People generally do not like the mining industry. They see movies about evil miners, whether it's science fiction like Avatar, or whether it's you know other, other movies that show what bad guys they are. At the same time, while people are belly aching about mining, they drive around in their cars that are made of metal. They live in their house, which is made of everything that came from a mine. They talk with each other on their cell phones and smartphones that, you know, I mean, your, your, your iPhone has something like 63 of the 92 elements on the periodic table in it. None of them are there by accident. So the mining industry has done a terrible job of explaining why it's important to the world. Another thing is more internal to the mining industry, and, and that is because the mining industry has a destructive business model. You, you discover something, you, cr you create value in the sense that you drill it up and identify minerals and ores and elements that are of value there and then you destroy it. You dig a mine and you pull it all out and you process it and, and something goes someplace, the value stream goes someplace, and you're left with a big hole in the ground in the end. And, and that's, that's the tradition of the mining industry, a, a wasting sort of an asset. Uh, this morning I gave a talk, I, I, I said, what if Boeing, the big airplane builder, built airplanes using the mining business model? Now, you know, if you, if you know anything about Boeing, you know that they design their airplanes down to the last screw and the last nut and the last wire bundle and the last, the, the, you know, the colors of the seats. They, they design it all, you know, before. No, if, if they used the mining model, they would design about 30% of their airplane. Then they would build a construction shed and they'd hire a bunch of people to come in and they'd start, you know, banging it together and they'd put together this odd looking bird at the end of the production line. It would be overweight, overpriced, wouldn't, it would crash, the first, the first couple of airplanes would crash. Then finally they'd get it right, and they'd sell about 15 or 20 airplanes that were actually good airplanes, and then they would shut down the airplane assembly line and fire everybody and you know, tear down the construction shit. A very strange business model you know, for, a, for a company like Boeing. But, yeah, it but, sounds but, more like software, actually. <laughs> That's the mining industry. Oh, we could get into software, too. But, but the, mining, the, the mining industry, they build a mine, they dig it out, they, they destroy the asset, they make some money along the way. The trick to investing in it, though, is you need to understand this idea, that it, it is a wasting, destructive asset. You have to get in at the right time when, when value starts to be created. You need to know when to get out, and you, know, you, you can't just think that you're a genius because the stock price went up and now you're sitting on a gain. No, it's not a gain unless you get out at the right time. And, and there are cycles. There are exploration cycles, followed by development cycles, followed by production cycles. And as you look at mining companies, that's one of the things you want to keep in mind. It's one of the things that we do in, our, in the newsletter, the Rickards Gold Speculator uh, newsletter, which, which I write. And, uh, you know, and we, we're focused right now on gold, silver, and we, we get into copper, copper, lead, zinc, you know, base metals, but things that are associated with gold, silver, because we do think that the precious metals and those other metals are where the value is, you know, right now. Well, PDAC every year, you know, we're just getting kicked off again. Every year the flavor's different, every year the feel's different. This year's different again, and, and it's kind of strange, it almost seems a little quiet to me. What are you seeing out there? Oh, great question, wonderful question. Uh, let's do a little history. Three years ago, it was the PDAC mausoleum. This building was a, was a tomb. Uh, in 2015, people were glum. I mean, a lot of empty booths. People didn't show up. They, I mean, they couldn't afford to pay the, yeah. the booth fee. Uh, 2016, we were just in that upswing that was just kicking off. Some of these companies had had double and triple and quadruple share price gains. And I mean, even big companies, big guys, you know, tech mining or tech resources was, you know, was booming. I mean, it was just, oh, the sense of euphoria two years ago. Then last year, you know, we, we, had our, we had our euphoric 2016. We were into that 2017 and people were, oh, we're confident we're, we've raised our money and we're gonna be doing our thing. And now this year, 
we've, we're in it. We're about eight months into a bit of a, a slide here, you know, and and so a lot of people are uh, they're they're, they're tight-lipped about it. I mean, there are a lot of good companies. They've raised money. They've made. Uh, they're, 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 they've they've done great things with their. If they're explorers, they've got good a handle on their exploration. They've got a good asset. The geologists have gotten smarter. We've paid a lot. We've paid a lot of tuition as shareholders. We have paid a lot of tuition to send geologists and management teams to school in the last you know two years uh, to learn about what it is that you know the next great thing, the next great project that's coming down the line. So we paid that tuition. Right now, you know, it's 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 certainly not somber. It's not tomb like uh, you know like three years ago with the the mausoleum uh, PDAC that we had, but, but uh, people are looking forward saying, what is going on? What's going on with the world? The, the big stock market is way up in the sky. Uh, there's all these weird things going on, all this money flowing into marijuana, all this money flowing into cryptos. I mean, even the mathematicians don't understand what cryptos is. There are people who are making immense amount of money on crypto who don't have the first slightest clue what it is. I mean, it violates Warren Buffett's first rule of understanding what you invest in, which is why he owns Dairy Queen. I mean, you understand ice cream cones, you know. You don't, nobody understands crypto. Give me a break. I mean, blockchain crypto, nobody, I mean, you, you can talk about it, but show me the math. You know, here's a blackboard, here's a piece of chalk. Show it. People can't do that. Very, very, very few people can do it. But they think that. But they think they're going to be smart investors by going into it. At least on my side, at least I can sleep at night thinking, well, I understand gold and silver and copper and lead. I understand mining. You know, I understand. You know, we, and if we if we play our cards right, we are in the the beginning of the next upswing of the commodity cycle. The world needs stuff. Seven and a half billion people in this world, and they want more stuff. I mean, maybe you've got enough stuff here in North America and, you know, you've got, don't, you know, you're, you're not, you're not worried about it. But the other, you know, s you know, six and a half billion people in the world, they want, they want more. So they want cars, they want air conditioners, they want refrigerators, they want a roof over their house. You know, that, so we, we can make some money there. Well, thank you very much, Byron. I'm sure uh, I could sit here and talk to you for an hour on this and our, a lot of our listeners would be interested in it, but it's just a pleasure to get it's, your thoughts on it. We'll it's, a pleasure, to you it's a pleasure to be here. And I, you know, I write for Agora Financial and you know, we're, on the, uh, we're on the newsletter and your, your circle. Newsletter and again is and it, the Rickards Gold Speculator with Byron King. Jim Rickards is my partner, international economist who has a you know, forecast for much higher gold prices. And I slipstream behind him talking about the kind of gold and silver companies that, that, that ought to do well. Well, thanks, Byron. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. It's great to be here.